Our next speaker is Ms. Angel Deguara, a lecturer and head of sociology department at Junior College of the University, author of Life on the Line, a sociological investigation of women working in a clothing factory in Malta. She conducted research on gender, work, poverty, development, and fair trade, religion, and teenage parenthood. She is the main spokesperson on social policy of Alternativa Democratica, the Malta Green Party. May I request her for the talk, please? Thank you. It's a pleasure to be here with you. Uh, thank you to Ahmadiyya Muslim Jamaat for inviting the Green Party to share its uh, views on this issue. Um, first, I would like to give a brief um, historical background of the Catholic Church in Malta, and then I would talk about the role of religion in a modern democracy, the relationship between religion and politics. The Maltese island's strong affinity with religion goes back to prehistorical times. Malta's history has seen it being occupied by a number of foreign powers, which left their impact on the religious beliefs of the people as well as on their general mindset. The Roman Catholic Church, which has long established itself in Malta, has traditionally been an important source and symbol of national identity with Malta considered to be the last bastion of Catholic morality in Europe. The Catholic Church's central role in the life of the Maltese people is not only reflected in how villages were designed with the parish church at their core, but also manifested in our cultural traditions, in the names of our streets, our houses, our children, as well as public structures, such as schools and hospitals. The church has traditionally been and continues to be an essential agent of welfare and support services for persons such as victims of domestic violence, persons with disability, refugees and asylum seekers, children, unwed mothers and elderly persons. The church was for many years also a central political force on the islands, not only because of the rights granted to it by our constitution, but also because of the support it has traditionally enjoyed by the populace. The church has for centuries had the privilege of setting the standards of morality for society and expected the state to observe and respect these standards. However, the relationship between church and state in Malta has historically fluctuated, depending on which party was in government as well as on the approach taken by the incumbent Archbishop towards civil and political matters. The Labour Party has a much more turbulent history with the Church, while the Nationalist Party, with its Christian democratic roots, is more inclined to appease the Church and to design policies in line with its teachings. The Church's active and influential role in setting moral standards is reflected in public policies and civil legislation, which are often inspired by the doctrine of the Catholic Church. Laws and social policies, particularly those relating to marriage and relationships, have tended to reflect religious mores and are designed or else are glaringly absent in line with the teachings of the Catholic Church. However, the role of the church and religion and their relationship to society have, especially since the 1960s, been undergoing a number of changes, as can be seen from a number of social trends, particularly in relation to personal lifestyle choices and participation in religious activities. While the vast majority of the Maltese claim to believe in a personal God, it is evident that the relationship with the church has changed. Concurrent with these trends, Malta has been undergoing a number of experiences which have been gradually leading to a society which is richer in cultural diversity and religious pluralism. However, this phenomenon is being felt more concretely in the recent past as more communities from countries other than those which are considered to be closer to us culturally, such as the UK or Italy, began to settle in Malta temporarily or permanently. 
This has led the Maltese to become more aware of the presence of such communities in our midst. Although research suggests that appreciation of diverse cultural traditions is unfortunately not so widespread. As a modern democratic state forming part of the European Union, the Maltese state professes to uphold values of human dignity, rights, freedoms and equalities. Although there is still more to be done on a legal level to ensure that these values are truly implemented in practice, rather than remain on a conceptual level, I feel that the main obstacles to ensuring a truly democratic, equal, pluralistic and socially just society befitting a modern democracy do not simply lie in our far from perfect legal framework. Although legal structures are important in ensuring such noble ideals, it is at grassroots level that more investment needs to be made. Considering the rather monolithic nature of our religious tradition, the insularity which has characterized our islands geographically and socially for so long, as well as our history of foreign domination, it is not surprising that as a nation we tend to be wary and cautious, even afraid of that which is different, foreign or unknown. This fear, which is often which often derives from ignorance, can only be overcome when we as a society become more open to otherness, when we learn to appreciate diversity and multiculturalism, when we use humanity and human rights as our benchmarks of acceptance, rather than narrow definitions based on traditional stereotypes and cultural prejudice, which unfortunately are at times reinforced by the media as well as by political and religious leaders and other opinion makers. Events such as this conference today are evidence that our society is moving in the direction of being more open to interfaith dialogue and co collaboration. The participation of religious figures as well as politicians from the main political parties augurs well at sending positive messages of interfaith solidarity and respect. However, there needs to be greater efforts at enhancing this appreciation of plurality and multiculturalism. For example, while the efforts of the Jesuit Refugee Service are much appreciated, the church can contribute more to fostering a more accepting attitude towards immigrants from African countries whose image is still shrouded in a lot of prejudice and fear. The same applies to certain politicians who prefer to use populist rhetoric in order to garner votes rather than use their influence to promote acceptance and solidarity. Alternativa Democratica is based on principles of social justice, civil rights, equality and multiculturalism. We believe that while our rich Catholic tradition should be given its due recognition by our constitution, no creed should be given exclusive status. While the church still has a very important role in society, both as a spiritual and social force, in our contemporary diverse and pluralistic society, we believe that social policy and civil law should not be designed according to the dictates of canon law or the laws of any other religious creed. Despite the rich Catholic tradition of the Maltese islands, Maltese society has changed and Malta is no longer the Catholic monolith it may once have been. We believe that the church is still an important voice in contemporary society and still has a lot to contribute politically. However, we believe that politics should be, should be based on universal ethical principles of human rights, social justice and equality, rather than on the moral principles dictated by one religious authority. We believe that the teaching of ethics grounded in universal values should form part of the national curriculum in our schools. Students should have the option of following courses about different religious traditions apart from Catholicism. 
and should no longer be examined in religious knowledge pertaining only to Roman Catholicism. Children should be taught from a young age to appreciate the beauty of different cultures. Through simple initiatives, such as listening to world music or tasting food from, from different cultures. We appreciate recent developments in legislation pertaining to hate crimes, which will now have a wider definition to include various grounds, including religion, sexual orientation and identity, ethnicity and political beliefs. Another positive move was the expansion of the remit of the National Commission for the Promotion of Equality, which can now officially deal with inequalities pertaining not only to gender and race, but also to sexual orientation, age and religion. It is appreciated that in Malta, individuals are free to believe and practice what they please, and that the Maltese state places no restrictions on minority religions. We believe that any religion which is compatible with the values of a democratic society and human rights has a place